Polokwane in the Limpopo province hosted round number six in the Absa Off-Road Championship. Again, the distance would be 400 k's. Reigning champion and points leader Hannes Krobler took on the prologue first and got away cleanly and quickly like he always does. It was a shortish 43 kilometers. Alfie Cox in the meantime knew exactly what he needed to do. Start off fast, get in front and stay there. Gerard Duplessis and brother-in-law Fabi Seerges had tasted victory already in the season and it was obvious they liked the taste. They were second quickest. Former national champ Duncan Foss and Henny Ter Steger were out debuting the new SP or super production class Nissan Hardbody. A brand spanking new 4 litre. It was impressive straight off the bat and was third fastest. Terence Marsh and Michael Whitehouse in their Nashua Mobile bat were still going great guns and with the championship leaders in Class A, they were third quickest in class. Batters Hill and Sutton though set the pace. They were spirited in the BSI Rob Steele Jimco. The Harpers, still on a high from their win in Lesotho, were enjoying themselves immensely. Nick is a fervent comrades marathon runner and his fitness showed. Gibson and Trithui were also battling on the orange space frame car and had become a scary sight for a lot of the big name teams, especially in the rearview mirror. Mark Cronje and Chris Birkin in the Castor Theatre loved the faster sections of the prologue. With his track racing background, it all made sense. <laughs> Gary Bantolt and Siegfried Rousseau in their bat were again in the thick of things, but the dry, dusty conditions would exact its severe toll from drivers, navigators and cars. Schroeder and Harris were smooth as ever and were rolling along in third place in Class D. For Fissa and Bardnost, the terrain was made for their Tyco trucks Toyota. They also had space over Pierce and Fossler, who'd broken a side shaft in the prologue. The Polokwane pair of Naim Mosaji and Nazim Moti in their first outing in the Otomoti tyre rack race co were impressing in second place in Class S. The BB Auto Nissan fairing Arnold Duplessis and Johan Knox from Polokwane know the area, so they were third in Class D. Ormerod and Hutchison were in control of Class B in the motorite racing bat Nissan in seventh place overall and three minutes ahead in class. <laughs> Taylor and Darshalain had dropped back to third in Class B after a rock damage the steering and the alternator. As for Bez and Etienne Besaidnot in their Redonko Opel 2-litre, they were cruising along well, handling the hills and dales with ease. Gil Nell and Peter Newbury and their Truggy were running in midfield. But Gavin Cronje and Houghton had shed most of their car's body. Somewhere there's a tree wearing castle colours out there. The other Castor Toyota in the capable hands of Paolo Piazzamuso and Oki Free was running two minutes back of Kronje and Houghton. <laughs> Perennial finishers Zermatna and Zwegler were still on track after another typically conservative run. Hichu and Jaap de Brain were going well in their Toyota looking for a top ten finish again. While 
Zane Pearce and Henny Forsler were looking the worst for wear, but heading for a straight sixth finish, missed a consistency themselves. The results and Krobler and Jordan victorious in a tad under seven hours, with Cox and Pitchford more than 30 minutes behind them. And in the special vehicle class, it was Duplessis and Seches again, with Marsh and Whitehouse 18 minutes in arrears. Go! From Limpopo, the circus moved to the second 1,000k event of the 05 season, the Fiota dealer race staged at Leidenberg in Mpumalanga. Krubler again started off like a house on fire on what he called a Mickey Mouse prologue of 9Ks. But his nearest rival and teammate Alfie Cox was trying to narrow things down. There was a great chance that this race would determine who would wear the national off-road crown. If Krubler won it, it was all over. If Cox won, it would go to the wire at Carnival City. Duplessis and Seches again threw down the gauntlet to the works teams and set a fast time in the prologue themselves. While Gary Bartolt and Siegfried Rousseau also kept up with their tradition of nailing down a quick time for the first event of every race. Talking firsts, Mark Corbett and Jean Moore were the first casualties of the race. Gavin Cronier and the lanky Robin Houghton were trying to keep the Toyota team in the hunt for the manufacturer's trophy. They were a few points behind Nissan but needed to keep the pressure on. His brother Mark and his nav Birkin had one of the worst spills of the year. Cronier was treated for concussion and had to sit out the rest of the season. Okay. The other theater, Piazza Musa and Fariz, was due a good one, and they were trying as hard as they could, but kept caution in mind at the same time. The big blue Ford of Schroeder and Harris was what the Ford team pinned their hopes on in Leidenberg. They were still eyeing the Class D championship. The same could be said for the father and son duo, the Harpers, who were determined to feature in Class A. Gronier and Houghton kept a white, red and green flag flying for Castrol Toyota. While the Tyco truck Toyota of Chris Fisser and Yapi Bardnost was looking and sounding as great as ever. The Matten and Zregler were looking for finish number 20 and looking likely to make it too, but a thousand Ks is a long way to go. Hutchison and Vincent Horn just needed to nail down a finish to win the Class B Championship, and they were well on their way. The Walks and their Super Pave special vehicle were nailing a few big names on their run in and impressed early on. While Marsh and Whitehouse gave as good as they got to stay in championship contention. Bevan Bartolt and Nick Salamalela were desperate for a good finish, but Bevan finds it hard to control his give it the keys and let it ride spirit. He's fun to watch, though. Corbett and Moore had got it on its wheels again, but after their early shunt, their back didn't want to know any more.
the Moffats, Mark and Stewart had been a model of consistency during the 05 season and were again going well early on in Leidenberg in Mpumalanga. The race Sonics Nissan of Kutsiela Beskachny and Johan Gerber was also on a mission, find and pass as quickly as possible. While the Automoti team of Mosaji and Moti who had won Class S at the Ford Motorite Limpopo 400 were also looking good for a repeat. Thomas Rundle and Mike Lawrenson and their Nissan 2.4 were smooth and enjoyed a good run. But Alfie Cox was the man they were all chasing. Krobra and Jordan had hit a tree and suffered some damage and the diminutive Cox had taken control. Gibson and Trithui were surprising all and sundry after a good showing in the prologue and the first day. They were shooting down some big names in the process. But make no mistake, the area had been dry and without much rain and the vehicles as well as their inhabitants were finding it hard out there. It was a grind. Zermatten was on track for yet another world mark for consecutive finishes. While Cronier and Houghton notched up a non-finish with some technical trouble themselves. The three days of racing and the Toyota Dealer 1000 title belonged to Alfie Cox and Ralph Pitchford. That made it two for two. 1000k races that is for the 05 season. The former bike racer was overjoyed as the strength and his chances of winning the national title. Krobler could not finish in the top ten.